Welcome everyone, Questine here on Serious Gaming with a discussion about Classic World Warcraft. It's been launched for over a week and we have things to talk about. How is it? How does it stack up? Well, I think the numbers speak for themselves. Millions of subscribers, every server full with a queue on top of that in the thousands or tens of thousands in certain cases, most watch game on Twitch, Activision's stock market rising by about 10%. Think of that for a second, that, that last bit. Activision's stock market price has risen by about close to $5 from 50 to 55 or close to 55. That is immense. The, the, the kind of level of success that World of Warcraft Classic has delivered to Blizzard and Activision is quite immense. This is probably the biggest launch that they've had in quite a while. And certainly for Blizzard Entertainment, it's probably been the biggest launch that they've had in quite a lot of years. If this was a World of Warcraft expansion, you would say that it was probably the most successful expansion in the history of the fucking game. Think of it. Burning Crusade, which is the, was the second most successful, is uh, is an expansion that delivered from 8 million to 12, close to 12 million by the end of the expansion. Classic World of Warcraft has attracted millions upon millions of players. We don't know the exact figures, Blizzard does. But if if, if one simply does the math, on the servers and does and understands how many people there are at online and how many people are waiting in queue which has been in the thousands and the fact that Blizzard keeps adding servers server after server after server and they keep getting full to one extent or another and Blizzard makes the point that the capacity of these servers is considerably higher than what we enjoyed in class uh, in vanilla then you have to understand that there are a lot of people which someone should have told Blizzard before Classic had launched because then they might not have screwed up the launch in a major way. Don't get me wrong, the game runs pretty damn well. Throughout all of these days that I've played the game, I've only had one server DC, no crashes, and only three or four periods of lag that lasted for about 10, 20 seconds. By any measure of any standard of a MMO launch or an expansion launch, that is highly successful. The game runs well. The game runs smoothly. The scripting is good. The, for most part, there are some minor things and one major one, but for most part, when it comes to abilities, pathfinding, questing, etc., everything runs pretty damn well. And yet, Blizzard screwed up in the biggest way by, say, for instance, you're playing in Europe. There are only two PvP servers announced initially for the entirety of the English playing population of World of Warcraft 2. I cannot describe the utter idiocy of that kind of decision. Blizzard added more, five, six, all that. There are over a dozen, getting close to what, two dozen PvP servers for Europe alone, something along those lines, some ridiculous number. How do we go from, from two servers to well over a dozen and a half, easily? And how is it that every single one of those servers has a queue in the thousands or Tens of thousands. I've seen the most ridiculous queue in my entire history of playing World of Warcraft since Retail Vanilla to Burn Crusade, Wrath of Lich King, Cataclysm, etc. In Classic, which is a queue of over 20,000 people. Well, how do we get to that? Well, we get to that because I think partly because of certain things. One, there are a lot of people in Blizzard that probably don't want Classic to be successful. That really hated and resented the fact that they had to make Classic in the first place. Understand? Blizzard fought the player base tooth and fucking nail to not make Classic. They didn't want to. They didn't want to do it. They resented it because uh, you think you do, but you don't. That, that those words will be forever etched in legend as, some, as the biggest example of hubris by a game developer in history after this launch uh, concerning what has happened. You, you think you do, but you don't know, Blizzard. I think we actually do. Like, we do. We are millions, and we do. We know what we want. You're the guys who think you know what we want, but you've been proven fucking wrong. So, Blizzard didn't want to do it, and they've been fighting against it, and to another extent, I think they underestimated it. I think that really they approached it from the perspective that they'd approach a, a regular World Warcraft expansion, which is to say... Their mentality right now in live with BFA Legion and all that, it's like, okay, we have an influx of players initially at launch, and then that dies down quickly. This is not how Classic works. This is not how Vanilla works. The reason is that because of the way the leveling is, which is stressful, boring, grinding, whatever, 
people get connected to their characters, they can get connected to other people, they have to play with other people, they have to socialize with other people, they have to group up with other people in order to get this done. There is no middle ground on this. You either group up with other people or you're in for hell. So of course, naturally, the vast majority of people that are leveling will group up with other players, they will form connections, they will join guilds, they'll play together, they'll get attached to their characters, they'll get, they'll get attached to other people. That is the success of Classic. That's what Classic delivers that no other expansion, even Burning Crusade it delivers. Certainly not the shit show that is Wrath of the Lich King and everything after Wrath. Because with every expansion since Wrath of the Lich King and everyone after, with, with Wrath and everything after it, You've had a move from the social aspect, the community aspect, the fact that you're you're encouraged, heavily encouraged by the game to group up with people. And it was already, I mean, changed to Burning Crusade, don't get me wrong, but it really took a nosedive in Wrath of the Lich King. This is the way that Blizzard approaches it. They approach it from the perspective that, oh, people will quit playing. Well, people will quit playing if they don't have a reason to stick around. They have a reason to stick around. They've spent days played in game to get to 60. They've spent... Uh, time getting to know other people, they form connections with other people, they've joined the guild, they've leveled up on that. There is a reason for them. People will not just quit easily over the next few days. They will not quit easily over the next few weeks or months. They will stick around. That is what's going to happen with regards to classic World Warcraft. And I don't think Blizzard understand that, understands that, appreciate that, appreciates that, or even to some extent even wants that to happen. Because classic being successful... Number one ga viewed game on Twitch, Activision stock market going up, millions upon millions of active subscribers, all of that coming together. You know what that is? That is basically the player base for Blizzard game basically saying, your game is shit on retail. And that's what it is. People have been clamoring, have been desiring an MMO for years that would do something like this. It's not that people are so necessarily fanatic about, oh, we have to have this old 15-year-old version. No, we want a different game than the piles of monetized crap that Blizzard has been putting in for years. Because seriously, fuck everything that they've been doing for the last decade at the very least. Really. It's been a mess. It's been a shit show. And I think this is a significant rebuke of everything that they've done as a developer in the years since then. And they're probably not taking it very well. There are, from what I've heard, you know, rumors, suggestions, leaks, all that, there are people within Blizzard working on BFA that are not particularly happy about this. Well, maybe if they made a better game, things would be different. Maybe if their priorities weren't about the same the same crap, casual crap that we've been getting for so many years, maybe if they changed our prior those priorities, or if they didn't segregate the player base between those that were playing on Mythic difficulty and the rest of the entire player base, maybe we wouldn't have it. You know, this is another thing that Vanilla does so well, the progression is natural. Not every raid here has multiple difficulties or raid sizes or whatnot. No, there are only, there's only the raid, the, there's only the base difficulty and you either deal with that or you don't. Some people deal with it and they move on to the next tier. Some people don't, they get stuck on the next tier. Everyone is on a path of a journey as I've heard it described. There is a journey from level 1 to 60 and then from 60, Molten Core, Anixia, all the way to next Remis. And you might, not, you might not be able to progress past the point of the journey, but you are always able to do so, and you're always on that journey with other players. That's what Classic does so well. Now, hell, that's what even Burn Crusade does so well to a large extent, and that's what Wrath and every other expansion don't do so well. That's the main success story behind Classic World Warcraft, and that's why so people, people will be so engaged and why people won't quit so easily. And this is something that Blizzard severely underestimated. I hope that from all of this, from all that's come out of this, from all the stories, from all um, from the financial success of this, that companies, not just Blizzard, realize exactly what, what's been lacking in the MMO scene. Because I can tell you for a fact, it's not having your entire game, vo <laughs> having the voice lines for every single character like Star Wars The Old Republic. And that's not what people necessarily care about. Though, don't get me wrong, that was certainly a nice touch to that game. It's not the most important thing in the world. It's not the glitzy mounts and pets and pet battles and nonsense like that. It's not the transmog. It is the game that's being played right in front of you and what that game has to offer. The community aspect, the leveling aspect, the social aspect, all that. Now, how is the actual game itself compared to, say, a private server? Well, it runs far better since it's not using an antiquated client. Performance is better. Scripting is considerably better. As a warrior, the one thing that really bothers me about private servers in general 
or the thing that bothers me in general about private servers, not not just as a warrior, is that it's always felt off movement-wise, ability-wise, scripting-wise. Something's always felt wrong. As someone who played vanilla, someone who played Burn Crusade, someone who played Raft, the Lich King, etc., something's generally felt off with private servers. They've never been able to get it together. Now, of course, Blizzard actually using game data from 1.12 is able to get it together properly. So this is so we get a game that actually runs well, feels good, and plays quite well. So that's good. What about balance? Isn't it too easy? Isn't that argument being made? That's too easy because apes did the Molten Core in six days. Yeah, they did Molten Core in six days as a guild of people that have played together on private servers for vanilla for years. They did it with a plan. They did it with a lot of preparation. They did it with a lot of fairy crafting and numbers behind it. That's how Apes was able to do it. You know, some people say, oh, they abused the rating system to get XP. I'll talk about that in a second. But no, it's not because that might play some role into why they won World First versus, say, other guilds. Maybe. I would question that in itself. But it's not the reason they were able to do Molten Core in six days. The reason they were able to do Molten Core is that they had a plan, they had organization, they have every, had everything set up. And they were able to execute that plan with very little sleep. I have a acquaintance in apes i asked him you know <laughs> i gave him a congrats once his guild killed the rag world first and then you know they were working towards the next thing he told me they were working towards the next end like he told me he had barely set for eight hours for an entire week or something along those lines it is insane just the just the amount of hours that people have put in that's why it's dedication uh, but on behalf of those players that wanted to get it done it's also having a plan having a look, good leadership it is also not the standard that anyone can else can be measured by. No, I mean, you're talking of the 1% in a sense of the 1% of the player base. How does that account for the rest of the player base? I don't have any clue. How does that account for the experience that people will have or the difficulty of raiding that people will have? I have no clue. It doesn't. It simply will not. And it can't. You can't judge the difficulty of a game just by what the top guilds are doing. Yes, a top guild with a raid organized, with people that have played together, with people that know the content, know the abilities. In my guild, in Dream State, we're not apes. We're not the guild that got a rag world first, but we're still one of the top world guilds. In my guild, you don't even... The question of you knowing boss tactics for anything doesn't even get put. Of course you know Molten Core. Of course you know Anixia. Of course you know every pull and everything that you need to do. Because you've done it before. Almost everyone that's in this in a guild like this has done it before. We've seen Molten Core on private servers. We know the paths. We know the pulls. We know the mobs. We know their abilities. We know how to deal with. And even if we need to, even if we've forgotten some things, those will be refreshed and we will know quite quickly how to handle those. That is how these things get handled in guilds like this. And the reason I stress this out is that is not that does not constitute the vast majority of the player base for the game. And I've noticed this. I've done I've done guild runs for almost every five men and as well as UBRS. I've raided in Zulfarak, I've raided in Scarlet Monastery when that was viable. It was, it's not as superb as people might believe, by the way, in terms of experience per hour. Yes, you gain, you go faster, you kill more mobs, but at the same time, you were already losing experience per hour versus like a five a dedicated five-man group. And it's not necessarily that much beneficial versus a five-man group. At least it wasn't. So that's a bit of a discussion there. I'll talk about more about that later. But suffice to say, I've done, done a lot of guild runs, very smooth, very uh, solid, but then I've done pugs, and here's what I've noticed in terms of the difficulty. The mobs do seem to die faster, but they're also far more dangerous in terms of the abilities they use, the damage they do. It feels to me as a tank that, even though I haven't played Prospect, you know, I've either been Arms or Fury, but I've done that before, right? I've done that on Light Soap, for instance, on Private Server for Vanilla. It feels to me that mobs are a lot more dangerous for you, for your party, uh, in terms of abilities they use. Some of them, or quite a lot of them, in terms of the damage they do. But a good group that's got good coordination, good healers, good mage, good warriors, etc. will be able to handle it quite relatively easily. But a pug group will struggle probably more than they struggled with these instances. Strat on dead in a pug, which I did, was not the greatest experience. Or, for instance, an LBRS run, a uh, Lord Blackrock Spire run, and a pug versus a guild group. A guild group, I did this F54. We cleared the entire instance F54. With the, with the major 54, 55, 56s in the party, right? A pug is slower, just to give you this idea. A pug that I was in is slower, despite the fact that almost all of us in this in the in the LBRS group were 58, 59, 60. 
there is the difference. Therein lies the difference. You can have a guild group that's organized and where people know what they're doing. They've played together. They know what they're doing. And you can do it faster, even though you're two, three, four levels lower than a pug group. With, obviously, the gear differences to go along with it between them. That is the difference. It is an, a significant difference. And I think you will see as more and more of the, I guess you could say, average player base gets into this kind of content, that they will also... Uh, struggle a bit with some things and that they will not just go into an Ixia and smash her in 10 minutes. We did. It was a bit disappointing for us, but not completely unexpected. I mean, you're talking to people, again, that have done this before, that they're organized, people know what they're doing, they know what to expect. Uh, it's going to be different for majority of the player base. That's where I stand on that in terms of difficulty. As for the rating discussion... You know, Blizzard called it a bug. I wouldn't call it a bug. A bug is something that doesn't work as... Uh, th that's glitched out, right? That doesn't work as intended. I think I'd call it an oversight place. Or just forgot to, to lower experience for people in raids. They didn't think about it. I think that they've, uh, they, they, they've had several oversights like that. Uh, there's an issue right now in the game. The only major issue, really, that I have in the game right now is the fact that you can you have a lot of mobs that when they're low hp they run away from you right they're supposed to come back and if they're close enough to another pack they're supposed to bring friends along with them that's how that mechanic is supposed to work there's a lot of mobs in a lot of instances especially past carlin monastery that you notice this where they don't so i feel that the fact that they only had testing on uh, on the classic beta they only had testing up to level 40 it was i believe um it is something that's really showing right now uh, with regards to the quality in certain things like you know, Zulfarak to an extent, but far more so in Blackrock Spire, lower and upper Blackrock Spire, Stratholm, etc. In terms of some of some in terms of an issue like that. And that's really the only major issue that I've noticed. Outside of that, of that, of that the game is pretty damn good. People are complaining about spell batching. Quite a few people don't like it uh, for obvious reasons or they don't like uh, something called the custom lag tolerance but a bit of a different thing than just the spell batching so people are not particularly happy with some of the things but those are in line with how things were in actual vanilla at least you know to some extent maybe some things are a bit exaggerated but for the most part those kind of things like spell batching were certainly the case in vanilla there were certainly things people had to deal with the vanilla they had to tackle them in vanilla and now they have to tackle them here on Classic. Overall, fairly solid experience, fairly, fairly solid game. Certainly worth a play, just keep in mind that there's a lot of dedication involved in it. And it's not just the game can pick, pick up and give up on a whim. Well, you can, maybe, but you won't do so in the same way that you would do on retail World of Warcraft. And yet, this, and I think this is the biggest point, the game industry thinks that we're all children that have toys that need to be taken away, that have, we have toys that we get bored after three minutes. The most significant thing about Classics launch is it disproves that theory quite very fucking thoroughly. Because it's not a game you... It, it's not a, just a toy we just pick up and drop. It's not something that fits their standards of convenience and easiness and all that. No, it certainly goes against a lot of that. And yet it is wildly successful among an, an enormous uh, number of gamers. It's something that a lot of people are interested in watching. A lot of people are interested in playing. And it's probably the biggest MMO launch since actual vanilla came out. Think on that. Show on that, just understand just the state of the MMO scene, like, or let alone the state of, wow. But the state of the entirety of the MMO market, that the most successful thing that they've released since Vanilla World of Warcraft is Vanilla World of Warcraft 2.0. Kosin here on Serious Gaming signing out. Thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for more. And if you like my content, please do consider supporting me either via the YouTube channel membership or Patreon or PayPal.